I mean, one of the things that we try to do um, to help our students succeed, not only in law school, but ultimately the bar exam, is to give them hard data. I think students tend to um, react better if they see clear, quantitative numbers um, in terms of how they might perform in law school or how they might perform on the bar exam. And so um, I've been sort of working with different uh, areas of the law school to sort of create, um, I don't want to say, say a formula, but a series of different metrics and, and predictors um, based on uh, students who have um, attended and either attrited or graduated from the law school and ultimately either passed or, or failed the bar exam. And, and really what we, what we do is we sort of combine all that data together um, into a spreadsheet and we give that information to the students. And it's not to tell the students that, oh, you're going to fail a particular class or you're not gonna graduate from law school or you're not gonna pass the bar exam. Um, really, we provide that student to the, that information to the students so that uh, the student can sort of see where they are, are they on track? And if they're not on track, specifically where are they weak? And you know, including some of the numbers from the longitudinal reports really helps those students to identify, okay, this is the area that I'm weak in. There's nothing I can really do about my LSAT scores. There's really nothing I can do about my undergraduate scores. But if I can improve my performance in a certain area within law school to counterbalance um, a lower LSAT score, a lower undergraduate GPA, um, that, that, then that can potentially uh, increase one's chances of, of uh, graduating law school and passing the bar exam on the first attempt.